And so our next speaker, Alex Collier, is someone who has taken on this, this job, this challenge, with great courage, great integrity, and has maintained that despite the tremendous challenges that have come his way. And he has a message to share, a message that he has not been in the American public uh, disseminating for six years now. His last public appearance in the United States was in 2002. So it's been six years that he took time off so that he could just give himself some, a time out because, as I said, the type of attacks, challenges that contactees face are incredible, uh, very uh, disturbing uh, in all, all aspects. And so Alex has now come back uh, to give us again his message, his experiences with the Andromedans and he has something that I think is as relevant today as it was back in 1990, almost 20 years ago when he first began to speak. And maybe now we are more ready for that message as opposed to when he first came out courageously bringing forward this message of hope and inspiration. And maybe now we are part of that group, that gathering that can help realize this vision. So without further ado, I introduce Alex Collier. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Hello? Hello? There we go. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, it, it is a real honor for me to be here uh, to share the stage with so many awesome speakers. Yes, I took a hiatus, um, and a well-deserved hiatus. Uh, um, I started talking about this in the early 1990s, and uh, very few people were ready to hear about it. And I was very passionate about it, and I kept bucking the system, kept bucking the system, only to get pushed back and pushed back. And uh, there comes a point where you know that you just have to let go. You know it in relationships, you know it in a, a career, uh, sometimes you even know it with yourself or with members of your family. You just have to just stop pushing, you just let go. And that's what I had to do. And in that process of letting go, um, I evolved a lot. And that needed to happen. I needed to grow. It doesn't seem like it, but um, for 40 years, I uh, have had a relationship with human beings from the constellation of Andromeda. It started when I was eight years old, and I only have an hour and a half, so I just want to kind of skim through this, because all the information, or most of the information that you want is available for free on the internet, um, and it is for free. It, I don't own the material. I, I just volunteered to deliver the message. Um, they're an incredible race. Now, they're not gods, okay? In, in, in the metaphysical community, in the UFO community, the New Age community, it's dangerous to worship um, your myths and your idols because when you do that, you don't necessarily see their faults. And everybody has faults. Uh, they are a fifth dimensional race. They are technologically 10,000 years more advanced than us and spiritually probably closer to 50,000. But they still have their own issues, okay, with their own society. They're still evolving. They're still trying to make their way and find out what is the path. And each one of them has their own path because they're individuals, just like we are. So. Regardless of who makes first contact, who shows up afterwards, whoever's in this room, the bottom line is this. We are all at different stages of evolution, but no one is better than any other. All right? No one is. And don't ever accept that. The Andromedans first came here because something happens in the future. 
And uh, there's a, a, a very negative imbalance that occurs in their future. And in tracing it back, they traced it back to our solar system. I don't know if that is still a probability now. Um, we are getting all kinds of help and intervention from many different races. And the reason for that is, is fascinating, to be perfectly honest with you. And it, it's probably going to take a little while for it to sit with you, but, but it, it's important that, you, that, that I do the best that I can to share this. It is the Andromedan perspective that all of us on this planet are genetic royalty that inside each one of us, we hold the combined DNA of 22 different extraterrestrial races. Now, all of the speakers have touched upon some of these things over the weekend, and I've sat in the audience with you, and like, you know, bells would go off. Bells would go off all the time. Uh, Dr. Uh, Cremo made reference to, here's physicality, but something brings it to life. Something creates the DNA. Okay, that's obviously spirit. It's soul. Um, David Wilcock talked about the same thing, of spirit, uh, higher dimensional realms, higher entities coming in and creating a template um, over life. All of these things are a possibility because God is so incredibly creative. There is no limit to the creativity of the creator or to us. Now, the Andromedan perspective, and I'm just going to get right into this and then I'll share some stories because I, I want you to sit with this. The Andromedan perspective is, is that many of us have already been through this cycle of evolution on a spiritual level. It is their perspective, and this is information that they have received from teachers that they have that are on ninth density is that on the 11th density, there is a race of beings called the Patal. They're also known as the founders who created the wormholes and many other things, okay, in our known universe. The Vidya, it's a holograph. Those who created our holograph, the original ones who created our holograph. Apparently, this, the spiritual evolution of our universe got stuck. Somehow it got stuck. And it was interesting that Michael Wilcock talked about, uh, David Wilcock talked about that last night as well. It is their perspective that this group of Patal left eternity to fall back into the concept of time. And that many civilizations, approximately 21 civilizations, in third density which are going through the same process we're going through, Patal are on all of those planets. Okay? So now you have highly spiritually evolved beings who came in to time, choosing to forget who they were, stepping into genetic royalty physicality. Now within that physicality and that genetic makeup that we have, we also have the racial memories of these races. Now, that's profound because when you take a look at the idea that many of these different races come from a completely different environments, completely different living habitats and ecosystems, which we'll talk about, there truly is absolutely no limit to what we are and what we can do. The question no longer is, and I agree absolutely 100% with Paola on this. It isn't, are we alone? Phew, that question's done. The question is, what do we want? That's the question. Who do you want to be? It's not who you were, who do you want to be? What do you want? In what direction do you want to create? What do you want to create? Do we create it together? Or do we stand as individuals?